everyone, it's Kate Kaltoff. Welcome to a Fab Friday Facebook Live. And today we're going to do beautiful baubles along with Under the Mistletoe Designer Series paper. And we're gonna make the most beautiful card and I make, I'm making it special. I come from a hunting family and I like to give people in my family who are hunters very special Christmas cards. And of course, these guys that are in my family, they are complete, complete lovers of nature. And that's really important to them as well as all sorts of wildlife conservation practices. But I would say that if you add up the amount of wild game I've eaten in my life and compared it to like normal, you know, raised animals, I've probably eaten more wild game than I have uh, just our regular domesticated animals because um, as I said, hunting is a big part of it. And I have to say, I don't hunt myself. I highly support all the hunters in my family, but I don't hunt myself. I had kind of an accident when I was about 15 years old. I was duck hunting with my dad and the gun backfired on me. And so I ended up, of course, this was the coldest day you could possibly have. The wind was biting. We were standing in a plowed field near a dredge ditch. And so when the gun backfired, I went flat on my back on a plowed field that was totally frozen and it sort of put me off from hunting after that. I've kind of been a little um, afraid of guns after that. Every time I get ready to shoot one, I am I sort of have that flashback to falling back on my back. And so I've just never taken to it after that. I did do a little hunting, of course, prior to that, but, but since that day, I've never really, um, enjoyed it very much. However, uh, even my husband's starting to take it up a little bit, which is great news. We really, we've really been encouraging him and it's probably, it took about 20 years before he would do it. He does obviously does not come from a hunting family. My daughter, her, her husband also um, has some grandparents that hunt, but his immediate parents don't hunt, but he's come the last two years with us. And so my job on the day on the days that people go hunting is to make scalloped potatoes and ham and and make sure everything is warmed up and ready to go when they get in. So that's why we're making this card today. Sorry about all the rambling, but you get me started talking about hunting and then I just don't want to quit because like I said, it's such an important part of the soul of our family. And so um this is the card we're going to make. You're probably looking at it thinking, well, what's hunting about this card? But I'll show you in a minute. It's it's the background paper. And then I'm also using the Dashing Deer set on the inside. Here it is. Isn't it gorgeous? And I wanna hold this up really close to the camera so that you can see all these different deer that are highlighted in the baubles here up at the top. And then of course it's got a really nice sentiment. The sentiment says, hope you find beauty in the details of the season. And then, ta-da, when you open it up, look it. So I just love this. And it's so pretty. And of course the, um, the little uh, ornament just kind of dangles here. So I'll show you how to do that so it's dangling. And it's just so pretty. So. I hope you love it as much as I do because I really, really love it. This is probably one of the favorite, my favorite cards that I've created in quite a while here. But again, it just, it rings true to my heart because of all the deer. And then I love the dashing deer set. So let me show you a little bit about what we're do, what we're using. I'll show you the, maybe I'll show you the deer first because that is not super important to this card. And I'll show you why in a second. Because the only thing I did for deer on this card was stamp those two images up here because I love them. They're right here and they almost coordinate with that designer series paper that I'm using. But you can purchase Dashing Deer as a bundle, which is something that I did right away. All right, so for the beautiful bottle set, this is a gorgeous bundle. And you might think you have to do a lot of coloring with it, but not necessarily so. I've, and, and if you're using our Stampin' Blends, it goes so quick and it's so much fun that you hardly even realize time is passing. At least that's the case for me. And then these are the thinlets that go with it. And honestly, I have um, one, two, three, I have two of them out on my Big Shot machine. So I'll show you those in a second. 
but look at all the things that you can do. So you've got two ornaments, very detailed and delicate. And then of course you can use the cutouts from those ornaments for shaker cards or things like that. Then you have a piece that doesn't actually cut out all the way, but it can be a, a really beautiful um, element on your card to either highlight a sentiment, an image, or possibly another shaker option for you. And that would be this right here. So that doesn't actually cut through, but if you do want it to cut through, which I did right here, there's another element with these dies that is this one that layers up behind it so that you can do the cut through. And that, that also can be used separately. I think that's a little bit bigger, maybe a little too big for a card, but perfect for like a scrapbook page or something like that. Then if I can get this up here, you see we have um, this little section and this, of course you can, it coordinates with the stamp set so that you can um, use it on these elements that you, you're stamping with, or you can just use it as a border on your card, which is what I did today. So what I did is I actually ran it through the Big Shot machine twice to make kind of a border here of ornaments at the top of my card, or you can use all these little pieces individually. And so, and then it even has a circle. So of course, when you're cutting this out, it cuts out the circle so that you get another element that you can use in your card making. So it's quite a nice set, and that's the Detailed Bobbles Thinlets. So I'm gonna set that aside right now, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how this works. So as I mentioned, uh-oh, now what did I do with it? Oh dear, for heaven's sakes, oh here. Here it is. Okay, so what I mentioned is I went ahead and I used this as kind of a border along the top of my card. So I did take my magnetic plate just because it, you know, sits and makes it really sturdy for me. Um, then what I did is I ran it through once and then I ran it through twice. And I did take a peek at this, so I punched out all of these little ornaments already. Um, and I had my cut plate over the top, but... When you take it off, it looks like this. And I did want to show you this paper that we're using. So it's the, it's this one right here. This is under the mistletoe. It's in our annual catalog. And it's all these little tiny deer. And when you hold this up, almost anywhere you put it is going to um, highlight deer, which is really, really cool for this card since that's kind of the whole idea behind the card is to highlight the deer. However, there are other designer series papers that Stampin' Up! has that will work really well as well. This is the best route designer series paper, and if you notice, there's all these little tiny bicycles. So if you've got somebody in your family, maybe that's a biker, look at that. You could make an ornament that um, would be perfect for someone who enjoys bike riding. So I love that. And then we have Santa's Workshop Specialty Designer Series paper, and there's several in here that would work. Now these would work, but I would use a different background, not white. I would use um, something that's darker to give it a little more contrast. But look at this, look at all these candy canes back here. Wouldn't that be fun? And then of course, let me go through here. Here's another one that would work great because I love these little lines through there. It looks very festive. And then another one would be these red dots. That would be very festive and cute. Um, so there's a few, a few that you could use. You want to look for really tiny images that will really be highlighted when you put these little ornaments up to it. All right, so we've kind of got that done. So let me show you. I started to get this cut out. I started with a piece of Whisper White, and I have it at four by five and a quarter. So just your standard card front. However, when we put it on our card, we're actually going to want to use a piece of designer series paper that is one eighth inch larger. So this particular one with the deer from under the mistletoe is an eighth of an inch larger so that it will come out just a little tiny bit bigger than the actual um, image right here that we're going to be doing you know, all of our work with. So as I mentioned, four by one eighth by five and three eighths. I think it's a good idea if I say those measurements twice because oddly enough, sometimes I think I'm saying I'm right and then I'll listen to the video later and go, oh my gosh, I didn't even say that right. So sometimes it helps if I say it twice. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put this on here. So I'm going to do that with some snail. So I flipped it over to the back side. You can always tell the back side when you've done embossing because there's kind of a little sharp edge on the back side and then the front side is kind of pushed in and smoother. So I'm going to go on the back side and I'm just going to add some snail here and there along the top just so that these lay down for us real nice. And then of course through here and through here. Then I'm going to very, very carefully put this on here because with snail you don't really have wiggle room like you do with your uh, liquid glue that you use. So I'm not even worried about what shows up in those little ornaments because almost anywhere you put it, it's going to show up and look great. So there we go. So you can see we've got some really cute little deer Look at that, just highlighted perfect. Just because there's so many of them and they're so close together, almost anything you do is going to look good. Then what we wanna do is the rest of our work here. So you wanna take just a scrap of Whisper White and you are going to open up your Shaded Spruce ink pad and then we're just gonna do a little stamping. You wanna do your stamping first. So just stamp that on some Whisper White scrap. Then you're going to run it through the Big Shot machine and you're going to use uh, the stitched shape framelits. And we're going to use the second largest one here. And, we'll, and I've already done that in advance, so I'll show you how all that works. So this time I used my magnetic platform. I took my, of course it's all layered up just like you have showed you before. I took my, uh, my sentiment. And here it is with the stitch shape, so you can see it's got the little stitching around it. And then I also used my ovals. So I've got the layering ovals because I wanted to add just a little bit of an edge around here. So the layering ovals, you can always find one that, that matches those stitch shaped. And that looks really good. Then we've got our ornament from Beautiful Bobbles. And I'll just take that out. And then I'm going to use my... Big Shot die brush as usual to go ahead and take this all out. How many of you have the Big Shot die brush already? Because it is a wonderful product and I just keep mine in the paper pumpkin box. I just turn the paper pumpkin box inside out and then I can just take it out like this and um, all my little scraps stay in the box instead of getting all over the floor. So this is a wonderful little thing that you can do to keep your, your scraps contained. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to take our, our uh, metallic shaded spruce and we're going to make a little bow. So I'll just do that real quick because we're going we're gonna to decorate this with a little bow. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take my ribbon scissors and just trim that up. There we go. So we've got that done. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the silicone sheet from Stampin' Up! And I am going to flip that over. I'm going to add some snail to the back of this. So just a little bit like that. Just maybe about an inch or so up from the bottom. That's all you want. Then you're going to take this little guy here. You are going to thread that on from the back, if I can get it flipped around. So now that we have it in there, we're going to turn it around. And then we're going to try to carefully put this on here so that the ribbon lays flush over the top. So there we go. So now we have our little ornament just on a string like this. See how neat that looks? Well, I should show you like this. So all I did was just, I just put like an inch of snail onto the back of the ribbon and then folded it up and then we have the ornament attached um, to the beautiful ribbon. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're gonna grab this and we're gonna take this. So this is a pretty quick card to do, so. I'm going to take a little snail here and we're just going to center this in so everything is nice and even. Press that down and then we'll use some dimensionals here. 
And then I'm not actually going to um, take the dimensionals off yet because I'm just going to set this here kind of where I think I want it. And then we're going to take this and make sure that looks pretty good. Do I want it a little higher, a little lower? Think about right here. So now I'm going to take my, my scissors and just trim a little bit up there at the top. I'm going to take this away. I'm going to flip this up. And then making sure I have it about as centered as I can, I'm going to flip the back side over, and we're going to use a little scotch tape to adhere that, just like this. There we go. So now it's kind of loose and flippy floppy, which is just fine. So I'm going to go to the back here, and I, I do want kind of a loose look, but I do want it semi-attached. So I'm just going to take this little sheet again. Do you guys use your silicone mats as much as I do? I mean, I just love it because you don't have to worry about um, getting snail all over your work surface and then sticking something down by accident. So I just put a little bit of snail here at the top where that, where that ribbon was put together. And then I can bring it down, bring it straight down and then we'll just press it on. There we go. So now we have it attached to our card. This is still loose, which is nice and flowing and looks very elegant. And, and this is loose a little bit up here. The only place we've attached it really is right there. Then I'm gonna take the little bow that I made and using a glue dot, which I have right here, I'm going to put this on with a glue dot. What we're going to do now is we're just going to grab this off here with the glue dot and we're going to set this right here onto that ribbon coming down with the ornament on it. And then all we have to do here now is take off the peelies and we're going to set our sentiment right here, which looks just gorgeous. And then we can go ahead and we can put it on our card base. So our card base is going to be shaded spruce. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And this one I'm gonna put on with multi-purpose liquid glue. For those of you that are wondering, I typically don't use multi-purpose liquid glue on Whisper White or on Berry Vanilla because sometimes there's glue lines associated with that, which you don't see right away but will often show up later. But the multi-purpose liquid glue is awesome because you can just put a little bit on and it sticks. So we're just going to wiggle this into place so that all four borders are nice and even. And that looks great. Now we're going to take another piece of Whisper White and this is going to be our inside panel. So the inside panel is going to be four by five and a quarter. And we're going to use our dashing deer. So what I did is I put them all on one block. This is a block E. They fit just lovely right there. So I'm going to ink them up with shaded spruce. And then we can go ahead and just stamp them. So we'll put them right here. Beautiful. And then I will grab the inside sentiment from Beautiful Bobbles. And we'll just stamp that right down here. And then we'll, we'll put a little line of snail across the top and we will stick it in our card. And it's done. So here's the card I just did. Here's the card I did in advance. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. You have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you on Monday with a Bank It Monday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.